everyone, welcome back to Quiet Calm Books. It's been literally six months since I posted my last video. Um, I'm so sorry about that. That's because I've been super busy with school and work and also busy moving back to New York City for school. I am officially settled into my NYC apartment now and unfortunately that does mean you won't get to see the backdrop of my pretty bookshelves for a while, but on the bright side, NYC itself is a hub of art and books, so I have plenty to show you. Today I'll be taking you around NYC and giving you tours of six different bookstores that you have to visit in the city. Joining me today is my boyfriend Troy, who is also an avid reader and lover of sci-fi and Japanese literature, so you may catch glimpses of him throughout the video. There are so many incredible bookstores in New York City and every book lover has their own personal favorites, but these are just some of mine. I'll also be posting the addresses of each bookstore in the description in case you want to visit them yourself, which I highly encourage you to do. It's really easy these days to just order books from Barnes & Noble and Amazon, which I also do myself, but it's so important to support smaller, independent bookstores right now, especially for us city-dwelling folk. These quaint little shops provide us with our quiet, bookish haven, and we want to show them our appreciation. All the bookshops I'll be exploring today are in Manhattan, with the exception of McNally Jackson, which is in Brooklyn. My university and my apartment are in Manhattan, so I don't have much reason to travel to the other boroughs to go book shopping, but maybe I'll eventually do a different video where I explore more bookstores in Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. Also, disclaimer, these vlogs took place over the course of a few days because my boyfriend and I did not want to trek all over New York City to go to all these bookstores in one day, so don't be alarmed when you see us magically change outfits. And I'm also showing this footage in the order we visited the shops and not necessarily in order of which ones I like the best. Right now we are crossing the Brooklyn Bridge and also passing by the Statue of Liberty. The first store we're visiting today is McNally Jackson Books. There are a few different McNally Jackson stores in NYC, but this one is located in City Point, Brooklyn at 445 Gold Street. The way that this bookshop utilizes its space is breathtaking. I just kept looking up and up because there are books lining the walls and the staircase, and there's so many little book nooks and crannies in, in the store that it feels like you're shopping in your own personal library, no matter how many people are around you. Troy and I were checking out this section of Asian American authors, and I was really struck by the first page of Severance by Ling Ma. This craft section was one of my absolute favorite parts of the store. I love when bookstores also sell aesthetic stationery supplies, and McNally had a huge selection of pens and fine liner colors. They were a bit on the pricier side, but I still had to test one out. I'm not particularly loyal to any stationery brands, but I do love Micron pens and anything cutesy, especially pastel colors, so if anyone has other stationery recommendations, let me know in the comments. I was so excited when I wandered over to the art and photography section and found a Yayoi Kusama art book, if you can't tell by the way I'm frantically flipping through the pages. I love Yayoi Kusama's bold, high contrast colors, and I think she's done a great job using her art to raise awareness about mental health. 
The lower level of McNally Jackson is mostly filled with art, science, and nonfiction books, while fiction books are on the upper level. As I'm wandering through these shelves, you can see how maze-like this door is, but it's definitely the type of magical place where you would want to get lost and locked in at closing. The manga selection was up here on the stairs, and while it wasn't much, it definitely got the prime spot. We finally made our way upstairs to look at the fiction, and one of my favorite parts about McNally Jackson is that it categorizes not just by genre, but by author. This huge section was for American fiction, but there were sections for authors all over the world. Of course I made a beeline for the Japanese section, but I just bought some Japanese lit recently, so I decided to choose a few other books this time. I'll also do a haul video of all the books I got during this trip, although it's probably pretty clear which ones caught my eye. Here's me, desperately hoping to stumble across a good fantasy since YA has been letting me down lately. Somehow we ended up in the cookbook section, and I thought these little pamphlets were so cute. I love the illustrations. Each one was dedicated to a specific ingredient like eggs, brown sugar, or honey, with recipes focusing on that ingredient. McNally Jackson is on this list for a reason. It's so welcoming and literally invites you to get lost. You should definitely check it out because you're bound to find the perfect book that you didn't know you needed and I definitely found quite a few of those on this trip. Next up, we visited Housing Works Bookstore and Cafe located at 126 Crosby Street in Soho. This is a second-hand book and thrift store that accepts books and other donations in order to fight homelessness and support people affected by HIV and AIDS. Troy and I had some old books to donate, so we brought our little book tote bag and gave some books away. The cafe is still closed, but even so, Housing Works is so cute. I loved the winding staircases, the fairy lights, and the platform connecting the two halves of the upper level. While the books may not be as up-to-date as McNally Jackson, there are definitely some more unique, older editions of books that you're unlikely to find anywhere else. The size of the store isn't as intimidating as others like The Strand, either, so if you're looking for a calm, bookish atmosphere to spend some time for an hour, this is ideal. It's always great to support our urban community, so if you're in NYC and you have more books than you can ever read, make sure to stop at the Donation Center right next door at 130 Crosby Street to give them away to people in need. Next on our list is Shakespeare & Co. located at 2020 Broadway. Shakespeare & Co. was founded in 1983 and has two additional U.S. locations. This is one of my all-time favorite bookstores in NYC and probably the one that I visit most often because of its quaint atmosphere and cute cafe. There's an outdoor seating area and especially now that the weather's getting warmer, it's so nice to get a cold drink and a pastry and sit outside with a book. It's a smaller bookstore overall, but that means that fewer people are walking around at any given time. If you're looking for an NYC bookstore that ranks number one in terms of quiet and comfort, then Shakespeare & Co. definitely earns that distinction from me. 
Shakespeare & Co. has a ton of personality, like its adorable blind date with a book display. Each book is wrapped in wrapping paper and has a brief description of certain book elements on the front, but you're not allowed to judge the book by its cover, title, or author. Every single time I go to Shakespeare & Co., I'm so tempted to go on a blind date with a book, but I chose not to do that this time. When school is in session, I love bringing my computer here to the cafe to catch up on homework or other work and doing a bit of book shopping afterwards. Unlike some of the other bookstores we visited, which were warmly lit with dark wood bookshelves, Shakespeare & Co. has a much more modern feel. It has green shelves, round tables, and lots of color. We went to the store in April, which was apparently Poetry Month, and they had this super cute setup of all their poetry books. And of course, I couldn't avoid going straight to the YA shelf too. I know I said that these bookstores aren't ranked or listed in order of how much I love them, but just know that Shakespeare & Co. feels super homey and has an extra special place in my heart. After we finished shopping, Troy and I stopped at a nearby park so we could finish our drinks and read for a while. Next up is probably the most famous bookstore in New York City, The Strand, located at 828 Broadway. If you're going to NYC and you only have time to visit one bookstore, I would recommend checking out The Strand purely for the wow factor. The Strand's tagline is 18 miles of books because they have over 2.5 million books. The Strand has four floors, including a basement level and their uppermost level full of rare books. The Strand is kind of like McNally Jackson in that there are just frankly too many books in the best way possible of course. It's easy to get lost in the maze-like structure, especially with four different levels to weave through. The Strand houses used books, brand new books, bookish merch and stationery, and pretty much everything else bookish you could possibly desire. This store is my go-to for bookish gifts for my friends. Their cloth bookmarks are extremely durable and I have quite a few, so let me know in the comments if you want to see a video showcasing all of my bookmarks. The book tables in the center of the store also have these cute signs to guide you through selecting and buying a book, and my favorite is definitely the BAM books table. I've run into my college friends at The Strand more than once because it's such a popular book spot, so if you're looking for a quiet space to spend an afternoon, The Strand may not be the place for you. It's always bustling with activity, but its sheer size and book selection are utterly impressive. The rare book room on the third floor is usually peaceful and quiet, but it's closed right now because of COVID. The section that I'm exploring right now is on the main floor and houses sci-fi, fantasy, mystery, and suspense books. The main floor also has general fiction, books on film and drama, cooking, poetry, and books about New York City, as well as most of the Strand brand merchandise. I've shown you some classic bookstores and some contemporary, but the Strand is like standing in a portal between those two worlds. I love the contrast of bright colors up against the dark spines of antique books. Moving up to the second floor, we have my favorite genre, young adult books, and books that are more hobby oriented, like art history, architecture, crafts, fashion, graphic design, photography, and the like. The manga, graphic novels, and children's books are also on this floor. By the way, if you're looking to get more involved in the bookish world, The Strand hosts a bunch of virtual events and panels on Crowdcast. They also buy used books and even have their very own book subscription box called the Book Hookup. Aside from the rare books third floor, which was closed when we visited, the final floor is the basement, or Strand Underground. It has half price and used books, as well as books in the nonfiction genre, like business, religion, psychology, science, travel, and law. It even boasts a vinyl and CD collection, so you really get a little bit of everything here. This floor in particular is so maze-like that you could probably play hide and seek there. I don't know if calling a bookstore maze-like is a plus for you guys, but it only increases the immersion for me. Overall, The Strand is such a cool store. Even though it's touristy, it's popular for good reason. I just love all the merch, the mix of classic and contemporary books, and the endless selection of genres. Moving on to bookstore number five, we have Posman Books located in Chelsea Market at 75 9th Avenue. Chelsea Market is one of my favorite places to visit on the weekends. This bookstore made the list partially because of its convenient location. Chelsea Market is full of unique restaurants and novelty shops, as well as a special artists and fleas section, selling original art, clothing, jewelry, and other items made by small businesses and artists. 
Posman Books isn't as large as some of the other bookstores I've mentioned, but it's the perfect stop to round out a trip to Chelsea. Their little book section has a surprisingly unique selection of books, and I've found some of my favorite Calvino reads here that I've been unable to find in store anywhere else. Their staff is super knowledgeable, and one of their cashiers even struck up a conversation with me about Calvino during one of my past visits. Posman Books is also just a great store for bookish trinkets for your desk, stationery, stickers, posters, washi tape, erasers, and other fun little accessories. The aesthetic of this bookstore is definitely more contemporary and trendy with a touch of industrial thanks to the industrial style ceilings throughout all of Chelsea Market. Everything in the store is designed to catch your eye, but there are lots of hidden gems tucked away in this long green wall full of books if you look closely. Even though I'm a full-grown adult, I've always liked the colorful kids section of this store too. The adorable book nook with the Posman Books logo on it kind of looks like one of the letters on the New York subway cars to me. I also spotted these unique and artsy Shakespeare covers. I'd really like to expand my classics collection, but considering I have quite a few editions of A Midsummer Night's Dream and my other favorite Shakespeare plays, I feel like I should buy other classics that I haven't read first. How often do you guys buy books that you already read or know you're going to read compared to brand new books? Let me know in the comments. Posman is such a cute store and the perfect place to visit if you want to add just a touch of bookishness to a day of shopping. And finally, last but certainly not least, we come to our final bookstore, Westsider Rare and Used Books, located at 2246 Broadway. My best friend flew out to visit me in New York for about a week, and one of our favorite things to do is explore used bookstores, record stores, and thrift shops, so we ended up going to Westsider Books. Westsider is an adorably small used bookstore with books sprawling everywhere. The bookshelves are floor to literal ceiling, and books are stacked on the floor, on top of the shelves, and even on the staircase. If you're in NYC on a budget, I definitely recommend Westsider. You can find used books with rare, out-of-print covers and even books in other languages, which is super helpful if you're learning a foreign language, for $1 to $10. NYC is one of the most expensive cities in America, and that includes books, so Westsider's prices are definitely a bargain. The front of the store has miscellaneous fiction and nonfiction alphabetized, while the back of the store houses sci-fi, horror, and fantasy series. It was actually a bit hard to film in the narrow space because, as you can see, there are stacks of books piled on the floor, but there's something so delightful about the chaos. My favorite part of this store is the way it makes you feel like you're stepping into a time capsule. There are posters, photographs, and memorabilia from old movies, concerts, and historical periods hidden in the corners and stuck to the walls. The used record selection is on the right side of the store, but you have to go even deeper into the book maze in order to get to it. My best friend and I spent a lot of time reminiscing over the children's section, where we found some surprising reads that I'll show off during my haul video. I also love the ladders that are perched precariously against the bookshelves. In a way, the space feels kind of like a treehouse stocked with books. The upper level of Westsider houses some of the store's oldest and rarest books along with the bird's eye view of the overflowing lower level. We found some vintage children's books with faded pastel covers, including Through the Looking Glass and other familiar titles, as well as some vintage sci-fi and trade paperbacks.
Every time I come to West Sider, I end up looking at these vintage postcards, which I think would look so cute as bookmarks or decorations in a personal library. So what did you guys think? Which was your favorite bookstore out of these six? I filmed this video over the course of many months in between college classes, and it was so fun to rediscover all of my favorite bookstores now that I'm back in New York. Do you have a personal favorite bookstore where you live or a favorite book aesthetic? Should I explore more bookstores in other boroughs or even in other East Coast cities? My channel is still new, so if you enjoyed this video and want to see more bookstore tours, book hauls, and book reviews, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, take a deep breath and take some time to yourself today to read and relax. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day!